everyone seems to believe that we need more affordable housing, so we're not asking you whether you think we need more affordable housing or not, but do you believe there should be any limits on where affordable housing is built, and do you support increasing the county's contribution to the Affordable Housing Investment Fund? Thank you. Um, I do believe this is an important issue. I'm on record as saying I think housing affordability and the challenges it will place on all kinds of folks in our uh, community from retirees to young families is going to be one of the biggest issues that shapes Arlington's future and whether we can remain diverse and economically competitive. Um, because it is such an important issue, I don't support putting limits uh, on where affordable housing might be built. I think one of the things that's motivating this question is something that I hear a lot from my neighbors in South Arlington which is the sense that our geographic distribution of affordable housing has been sort of unfair throughout the county. That's one of the reasons I've talked a lot about modest zoning flexibilities that will allow us to increase supply and increase the amount of housing that is affordable um, in all kinds of communities across the county, including our single family neighborhoods. Just to give you one example, I've talked a lot about accessory dwelling units, which are those kind of mother-in-law apartments. We know that those are actually a strategy for affordability if we allow a few more of them modestly and thoughtfully relax our zoning standards to enable them because they allow for multifamily housing, multi-generational housing that helps older folks age in place um, and tackle their rising assessments by bringing in additional income. And it also creates affordable options for uh, caretakers um, and young families themselves. So uh, I, I do not want to restrict anywhere. We can pursue, for example, our good strategies about partnering uh, with nonprofit and for-profit developers. Um, I don't believe in restricting where they can go around the county. I think Arlington is becoming so unaffordable and the crisis is so acute that we need all of the tools in our toolbox. But I would like us to address some of these modest zoning flexibilities to ensure geographic distribution of a housing affordability because I think we all benefit from it. I don't think we need any limits on where we locate affordable housing as long as we bear in mind that parks and green spaces are off, off limits. Um, they should not be used for building anything. But if we're talking about where in Arlington we should be building affordable housing, uh, my answer is almost any place that uh, becomes available. Our challenge is finding land that uh, is appropriate to support uh, uh, housing uh, projects. Um, we uh, have a, a limited amount of land. I think that there are teams already in uh, uh, APA and in the county government trying to identify parcels large enough to uh, support affordable housing in North Arlington. The highway is a great corridor for this. Any place actually is a great corridor for this. We're not going to be uh, able to uh, pick and choose our locations very well. As land prices rise, our commitment to uh, the investment fund should also rise because what we're going to have to do is acquire land. And I don't mean necessarily that the Arlington County will own land, but we need to work with uh, public and private uh, organizations, charity organizations, anybody who is willing to work with us to solve this problem because it is an intractable problem. If the federal government at some point requires us to expand I-66, I think Arlington needs to insist on air rights. It is the only land that we can actually create. I'm on record and I stand here again and say that I'm committed to holding the line on the $40 million a year that Arlington County spends roughly on affordable housing. That includes a variety of housing programs, including the AHIF. Regarding where we put affordable housing, a lot of times that question, as Katie alluded to, gets wrapped up in uh, geographic questions. There could be a racial component to that. There could be a lot of things that are subtext to that. I think that we have to be very creative and open-minded about where we put housing. But we also have to realize that there are a lot of people who are living in Arlington and we just, and, and nothing in Arlington as we know and as we've alluded to gets done just by decree. That's, that's not how Arlington works, it's, it's through conversation. And one of the things that we've decided and we've committed to one of our core values on the Lee Highway revitalization is that housing is a core goal of that plan. And as Bruce alluded to, that is going to be an important place to look at housing options. But as we also know, that Lee Highway has its challenges and the zoning has its challenges. And we can't just decide to rezone things because 
we want to create more housing in certain places. So I think it's going to be a creative conversation with all constituencies in Arlington. I think it's going to be uh, incumbent upon the private sector to also help us find solutions, especially on that 80 to 120 percent of the median income. The county has spent a lot of focus on that below 80 percent. But there's a lot of millennials that we've talked about, and younger and older adults who are, want to stay in Arlington, and the and the affordable housing programs are not meeting those needs. During nearly a decade in the Planning Commission, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of folks. Um, and I'm proud to say that through my work and that of others, including familiar faces I see in the room, um, more than 1,000 units of committed affordable housing were created all over Arlington County. Now, as far as limits on where affordable housing should be built, I am aware that in this part of Columbia Pike, the western end of the pike, there is a strong perception by many people that there is, quote, a concentration of affordable housing, of committed affordable housing. And I don't think anybody running for office or anybody in elected office should ignore that that is a perception. Now, at the same time, I think that it's not necessarily that there is a concentration of committed affordable housing, but quite frankly, my friends, a concentration of poverty. And that can be managed in other ways. There's concerns, obviously, about the concentration of poverty effects on the neighborhood and on um, the schools. Now, I do support um, you know, priority of affordable housing units to go to current county residents or residents of people who work for the county or the school system. Now, as far as uh, increasing the contribution to the AHEF, I have said that while I do commit, I am committed to the current funding level, I am concerned about the fact that there is increasing budgetary pressure. Okay? We're adding more than 1,000 students a year, and even if you put them in the coat closet, and I have a kindergartner, you still have to hire teachers and get books and materials for them. So what we really need to do is diversify the sources of funding that goes into the AHEP. We need to re-examine the housing ordinance and when the developers are paying into the fund in order to build an exchange for building in the metro corridor, they need to pay more so that we have more resources. Thank you. So I said in the opening that our policy should be to expand uh, affordable housing and we also need to disperse affordable housing through the county. But let me break it down into a few key components because we're often talking about different things. Multi-family housing buildings uh, do not belong everywhere in Arlington, but that doesn't mean you don't have affordable housing policy throughout the county. Affordable housing needs to be dispersed so that you don't have an over-concentration of lower incomes that burden some schools disproportionately. But what it means is that in addition to making sure that new development brings with it affordable units, wherever that may happen to occur in the county, it means that we, uh, we uh, explore market rate solutions like duplex and triplex housing, as well as accessory de dwellings, as Katie mentioned, and also look at affordable by design principles that go into a lot of uh, pre uh, prefabricated houses, which are very suitable for young professionals looking for a more affordable entree into the Arlington housing market. And we can't forget about retirees, who we may not be able to, uh, you know, reduce their their ownership costs, but we can certainly reduce. Uh, their cost to operate by making sure if they are eligible for property tax relief, they get it. And number two, that we partner and leverage to make it a little bit easier for them to operate their homes more affordably and efficiently by uh, providing some energy efficiency programs that help them retrofit maybe leaky old drafty homes to, to be a little bit less expensive to operate. But the point is clear. Affordable housing is not just one neighborhood's concern. It's a county concern. And we need to embrace it with an all of the above approach. Thank you. Uh, li limiting affordable, affordable housing around the county is something that I think we don't need to do. We have an opportunity to expand affordable housing to many parts of the county. Uh, after my service to our country, it was market rate affordable housing that allowed me to live in Arlington. I often tell the joke that Arlington is a great party with a huge cover charge. <laughs> and I make that point because as a school board member, I listen and hear the teachers and county workers tell me they want to live where they work. And so there are opportunities for us to invest, one, in uh, increase our contribution to the Affordable Housing Investment Fund and make more housing affordable to our county and uh, employees without increasing our taxes. One of the things that I talked about is what is our commitment to affordable housing? Is it something that we want to invest in? 
I say yes. There's opportunities with closeout funds. Having actually put a budget together and, and been responsible for 47% of the budget, I know that there are closeout funds available that we could use to increase our contribution. We can uh, revisit the formula that developers uh, who are the same folks causing the strain for density on our infrastructure pay more on their contributions. This opportunity for public-private partnership where our millennials, our seniors, get access to housing at a more affordable rate. I had knocked on the door to a senior and, and, and they told me, I like to do the same thing millennials do, just not at the same hours of the day. So this is something that we have to think about. Yeah, I had to think about that one too. <laughs>